how they run practice. What I would do, me fat boy, make sure you get tons of balls. Make the kids bring balls. If you can't get balls yourself for your AD, make the kids bring balls. I used to have my kids bring uh, two cans each to try out for a team. And dude, I used to have like 40 kids try out. So I would have 80 cans, you know? And generally once you build, we had four shopping carts of balls. Keep the old balls for rainy days and for your crappy players, okay? Have the kids see each other. So our practice would be the stretching, the warm up, uh, moderate run, agilities. At 3.30, I would demonstrate a drill. I'll say, okay, this is what we're gonna do. You're gonna bounce the ball, you know, feed the ball down the line, and you'll, you'll rally, okay? And you tally up the points. Whoever wins three out of five, you go on the other side, you're champ now. Then the, the opposing player comes in, bounces the ball, and you play out the point. Live ball feeding. Pretty awesome. Now, if you're working on a stroke, like I used to work on volleys, right? We used to do a lot of volleys. So I would have the player's service line, get one ball, you feed the ball, and the other person would volley, and then you would see how many hits you get in a row. Working on skills, okay? Two things you came from this. The kid feeding the ball with the volley, learns how to feed the ball. The kid volleying with him gets to practice volleying, okay? They give them three reps, three balls. They, they can stay as long as they can keep three balls in play. The longer you keep the ball in play, the longer you get to play. After you've done your three balls, you switch sides with your partner, keep the same partner. That way you group them, like your number one player with your number two player, okay? Your number three player with your number four player. That way your best kids are getting the best practice, right? If it's not going very well, mix it for, for like one round. Have your best player with the number 13 player, you know? They like that, they like that. Okay, and they're working on skills. So have the kids feed while you go around coaching them. That way you can have eight kids hitting on two courts and you coaching as opposed to one kid hitting while you're feeding. That way you can help all eight as they're playing because I can help a kid here and I can yell at another kid there. You know, I can remind all of them, hey stop, everybody. I want you to keep the racket by your head. Keep the racket by your head. And you do that and then you have all eight of them working out together, okay? Big secret on that one. I learned that took a while. And that'll save your arm too, okay? And then, um, so you, you 3.30 to 4 o'clock you're drilling. Uh, 4 o'clock to 4.30 you make it competitive. So you do co -op to start, make it competitive, make teams, um, or make it, they play the five and you accumulate points and, and after you, you play for 20 minutes. So like, I feed a ball to you, we're ball, uh, you're in the baseline at net, I feed the ball to you, you have to pass me. If you pass me, you win the point, you stay on that baseline side. Always make the baseline side, make the side receiving the feed the champion. If they miss the point, they're out. Then you go on that side, I'm on that side now, I'm the champ, they feed me the ball, I hit a winner, and I get one point. Then you can do patterns. Um, they feed the ball to me, I hit the ball to them, off their volley, I must lob. I lob, they hit overhead point starts. If I miss the lob, I get one more chance, they hit the ball to me, I hit the ball to me, they hit the volley, I hit the lob. You know, and then you make more, it gets harder and harder. Okay? And then from 4.30 to 5, you have the match play. Like normal doubles, rotating or cross court singles we talked about earlier. Okay? At 5 o'clock, you bring them in, have them do one last running activity, debrief the whole practice, and then send them off. That's how I used to run practice.